Greetings. Today I'm going to show you a feature that's available in some wireless access points and why, if you've got a security or CCTV system that relies on domestic Wi-Fi, you don't really have much security at all, as the system can be crippled with just a few pounds worth of off-the-shelf hardware. Stay tuned. The feature we're going to look at today is known by a number of names depending on the vendor. Aruba call it wireless containment, Cisco call it containment mode. We were looking at Cisco's version on two different wireless platforms. The normal use for this would be if what is known as a rogue access point is found within your network. It could be, for example, that someone's taken their own access point and plugged it into your network to allow unauthorized access, perhaps with a high gain or directional antenna to make it easier to pick up from outside. This access point can be detected by your own access points. Until you can pinpoint the exact location of the rogue AP and can physically remove it, you can use containment mode. This turns the rogue into Billy Nomates by identifying any devices connected to it and using one or more of your own APs to hammer the connected devices with disconnect requests. Now before we see this in action, a quick warning. If you're dealing with your own network and devices that shouldn't be connected to it, then you should be in the clear. If you're targeting someone else's network, then depending on where you live, you could be breaking the law, and if caught, you get into a lot of trouble. The networks I'll be having a pop at here are my own, so I'm perfectly within my rights to trash them. First of all, I'll be using this Cisco 2504 wireless LAN controller with some Cisco Aeronet 1600 series wireless access points. One important point to note here is that if the date and time aren't set on the controller, it'll default to the year 2000 and the APs won't join it. You've got to set the time first. First thing we'll do is go into advanced mode so we can get full access. As you can see from the rogue section in the web interface, the AP has detected neighbouring APs and the controller has them listed as unclassified rogues. You might have APs that are perfectly legitimate, such as wireless printers, as long as they can't be used as a gateway to your network, so these will be reclassified as friendly rogues or added to the ignore list. These are the three I'm interested in though. One's a 2.4 GHz network, the other two are 5 GHz networks, and like I said, all three are mine, so I'm allowed to do this. I'm going to hit the 2.4 GHz network first. We'll get some ping tests going to the devices that are on that network. I know this one is my EV charger out by the garage. This is an iPad, which is right next to me. And this is my phone. Now let's see what happens when I choose the network they're on, which is all this 2.4 gigahertz network, and choose containment mode. Number of APs, I have two. I can choose up to four. By default, it'll just use one, I think. Um, or it'll use however many it needs to, to do the job. Let's click apply. There may be legal issues. Yep, I've already covered that. You, you sure you want to continue? Okay. And they're gone. Now the iPad won't be gone for very long because the iPad also has my 5 gigahertz network stored in. So that's going to jump off this one now and try to join the 5 gigahertz network instead. But the others, they're out. Let's change that from containment mode back to alert mode while I remember. Let's do the 5 gigahertz networks now. And you can see that only one of the 5 GHz networks is being contained. The other one is stuck at containment pending. More on that in a few minutes. So that's all well and good. I've mentioned NACA a wireless network, but that's using a wireless LAN controller. And they're not very cheap, although the access points can be picked up very cheaply on eBay. What are the other options? Well, how about a virtual controller? Virtual WLCs are available with a 60-day trial license. And as for the software to run it on, VirtualBox can do it. And for personal use, that's free. As you can see, this virtual machine is running on my PC, could just as easily run on a laptop, and has all the AP containment features of a physical controller. That just leaves the second-hand APs to buy. Any other options? Well, yes, there are, but you've got to jump to a different model of AP for this. As is the case for most Cisco APs, the 1600 has two different firmware versions, 
lightweight or CAPWAP firmware is used when the AP is connected to a central controller, as we've seen today. Autonomous or standalone firmware lets the access point run completely self-contained with no extra controller required, like a domestic access point. Unfortunately, a 1600 in autonomous mode doesn't have any containment options, at least none that I've seen. It doesn't mean you can't do it with just an access point on its own, though. For this, I'm going to jump to a much newer model of AP, the 1830 series. Although these can be run by a wireless LAN controller, same as the 1600s, they can also run a version of software known as Cisco Mobility Express. This allows the access point to run as a standalone access point, just as you saw with the 1600 just now, but also gives it some of the capabilities of a wireless LAN controller, allowing it to run other access points, even older ones such as the 1600s as you can see here. Looking in the web interface, you can see that there are rogue detection facilities, but no option to contain them. You can classify them, but you can't contain them. On the 2504, on the virtual controller, this screen looked exactly the same unless you jumped into advanced view. Random Mobility Express, you can't do that. Uh, this is expert view, and that's as close as you'll get to it. However, what you can do is use this screen to determine what you need to contain, and then use the command line interface of the access point to perform the containment. This is the AP I want to do. It's on the 2.4 gig band again. And the command we need to do is config rogue AP classify malicious state alert and then give the MAC address of the access point. Then I can do con config rogue AP classify malicious state contain. I can't do the classification change and the state change at the same time. And then the number of access points we want to um, contain it with, which can be up to four. There's only, there's only this one on its own at the moment. I've not got the, um, the 1600s connecting to it, but I can choose that anyway. Uh, may have legal consequences. Yep. Okay. We're fine. If I now go into the malicious section, you can see it's in there and it's contained along with two of its clients. Now you may not be able to contain an AP directly from within the uh, <clears throat> from within the web interface, but what you can do is contain individual clients. So for example, we can take this device. And kick it off the network. So there you go, one standalone access point trashing a nearby network. Just add a 48 volt power supply and three more access points if you really want to go to town on it. Well, you may be thinking, so what? Well, remember at the very beginning of the video, I mentioned security and CCTV? How about those fancy video doorbells we see advertised on TV that claim you can see who's at your door when you're not even there? Well, if they use Wi-Fi, they can be knocked out without affecting any neighboring properties. All the attacker has to do is cruise the neighborhood detecting rogue APs, look at the devices connected to them, and pick out the device addresses tied to video doorbell manufacturers. They could even attack the doorbell itself without affecting the rest of the network. The same goes for wireless CCTV cameras, at least those using Wi-Fi to connect, not the earlier 2.4 gigahertz analog ones that used to interfere with everyone's Wi-Fi anyway. Security systems that use other wireless technology to link sensors together should be fine, even so-called smart systems. Yale do one, for example, where the alarm components around the house are connected wirelessly, presumably using the 868 MHz band, but the internet gateway is cabled to your broadband router, so it doesn't rely on a domestic Wi-Fi connection. Other systems may or may not do this. Some certainly don't. Oh, and SkyQ mini boxes can connect to the main box either by cable or by Wi-Fi. Chances are the installer's taken the easy option there and Wi-Fi'd it, which means that that can be messed with as well. So what can you do to protect yourself from this? Well, remember that the controller would only contain one of my two 5 gigahertz networks. That's because the other one was using a dynamic frequency selection or DFS channel. The Cisco APs won't target DFS channels, although there's no guarantee that this won't change in the future, or that certain software releases, for example, the first ones to offer AP containment, did do it. By switching your network to use a DFS channel, you're reducing the amount of hardware that can hit it, at least for now. If your equipment only uses the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band, well, that's not an option, as DFS channels are 5 GHz only. For these, the only solution is the one that will provide the best performance, as long as they support it. Cable them. Anyway, that's it for now. 
If you've watched this far, I hope you found it useful or enlightening. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon. Although probably via a different Wi-Fi channel.